All right, so maybe let's get started. Hi, everybody. I'm Patrick Chanazon from Docker. And uh, today, we're going to talk about the Mobi project. Uh, and we're lucky because many of us from Docker uh, came at KubeCon. And uh, so we'll have uh, Stephen Day, who's going to talk about ContainerD. Uh, um, and Justin Cormack is going to talk about Linux Git. So let's talk, uh, let's talk about the Mobi project. Um, so Docker itself uh, is a, it's a platform uh, that sits above your infrastructure, any type of infrastructure, uh, and then runs uh, any type of applications, uh, both Linux and Windows. Uh, it runs on, uh, uh, on premise uh, in different cloud providers. So it provides you that insulation and future proofing, uh, allowing you to add new type of infrastructure and have that same layer of isolation on top of it, and then run new types of workloads uh, uh, on top of it as, um, as, as uh, the, the way we, we're building applications evolves. So that's what Docker is. If we look in the details of it, uh, there are four layers in there. Uh, so on top of infrastructure, you have uh, uh, the core container runtime that's called ContainerD. So we're going to talk about that. That's one of the key pieces of the Mobi project. Uh, and actually today or yesterday was really a great day because after one year working on the ContainerD project, we announced ContainerD 1.0. Uh, then on top of that, you have orchestration. So in Docker, uh, orchestration is done with a component that's called Swarm. Uh, on top of it, you have a Docker Community Edition, uh, which is the developer tools, uh, the tools that you're using to do Docker build, Docker push, uh, to build your images and run them. And then on top of it, we're building a Docker Enterprise Edition, which is a full-blown platform for enterprises to be able to uh, run containers and manage them. So the Enterprise Edition and Community Edition ship on different types of distros, uh, the, one, the most common ones that people are using. Uh, the Community Edition, you can find it on uh, Mac and Windows, uh, on, on your laptop for development. Uh, the Enterprise Edition runs on uh, any type of infrastructure that enterprises uh, typically uh, use. And one of the use cases uh, that we see enterprises use Docker for uh, most commonly is to modernize traditional applications. So initially, when containers appeared four years ago, lots of people were using Docker for CI, CD, or microservice type applications. Nowadays, all the rage is to take uh, your old uh, .NET or Java application uh, that are running uh, in VMs uh, or on bare metal containerize them, and then once you've containerized them, uh, you can use Docker EE to uh, set up a full uh, workflow CI, CD, uh, and, and run them on different type of infrastructure. So that, that's a, a very important use case that we see more and more enterprises doing. So one of the big news that we announced at DockerCon this year, uh, and this is why uh, there are so many uh, 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 Docker engineers coming at KubeCon, uh, is that in addition to Swarm, uh, we're in the next version of Docker Enterprise Edition. We're also going to support Kubernetes as a choice of orchestrator. So that gives you the best enterprise container security management with Docker Enterprise Edition, the best container development workflow uh, with Docker Community Edition, a choice of two orchestrators, and it's uh, it's the, the native Kubernetes bits that are in there. So that means that all the Kubernetes ecosystem of different projects can run uh, with it. And then this is backed by the core container runtime that is uh, ContainerD, which is now 1.0. Congrats, Steven and team. Uh, so in order to, uh, to do that, uh, we, we followed the traditional uh, Docker innovation model. Uh, we develop all our components upstream in the Mobi project. Uh, so there we collaborate with uh, uh, 9,000 other open source contributors. Uh, there's 8,800 PRs per year. So it's a very active set of projects. Uh, and then based on that, uh, we use that as the upstream for Docker Community Edition uh, targeted at developers and then Docker Enterprise Edition targeted at enterprises. So the Mobi project has lots of different components. Uh, uh, so SwarmKit is for orchestration, InfraKit is for infrastructure management, uh, LinuxKit is a toolkit that allows you to create your own Linux distributions that are very small uh, and very secure. Uh, 
Uh, container D is the core container runtime, uh, uh, which is now 1.0, and it implements the uh, OCI standards for uh, image uh, format as well as runtime. Uh, Run C is the reference implementation for OCI, so it's used by Container D. Uh, VPN Kit is a, a toolkit that's used to, uh, to do the network uh, uh, management on Docker for Mac. Uh, registry, Lib Network, there are tons of projects in there. So today, uh, in today's session, we'll focus on three of them, uh, ContainerD, Linux Kit, and if we have time, InfraKit. So how, how did we uh, integrate Kubernetes in Docker? Uh, actually, it's been a, a work that happened in the open uh, uh, for more than a year. Uh, so it started with uh, the ContainerD 1.0 roadmap defined with the Kubernetes community uh, at uh, KubeCon uh, last, uh, in November 2016. Uh, then uh, in March, we contributed ContainerD to the Cloud Native Foundation, so it's a CNCF project. Uh, in April at DockerCon, uh, we showed uh, uh, Linux Kit and Kubernetes uh, working together with the help of uh, uh, Ilya from Weave, who's sitting there. <laughs> Thank you, Ilya. Uh, and then um, uh, we've worked with Google, uh, with Lantao and the Google team on a, a CRI ContainerD, which is a Kubernetes uh, CR, uh, container runtime interface implementation in terms of ContainerD instead of DockerD. Uh, LibNetwork implemented, started to implement CNI uh, in September. We talked about that at the Open Source Summit. Uh, then in October, we gave Notary to CNCF. There was a talk about Notary uh, earlier this morning uh, by David Lawrence and Ashwini. Uh, and then uh, the beta uh, of Docker with Kubernetes support uh, is starting uh, probably in December, uh, private beta. Uh, and then the, the GA will be in the first half of 2018. So ContainerD and Notary uh, are now CNCF projects, so we really love the CNCF. Uh, there are a whole community of developers who participated in that. Uh, Elia, your picture is a little bit small there. <laughs> uh, and then uh, wh what we're really excited about at Docker is what will happen uh, for containers in terms of innovation when the two uh, largest uh, open source projects around containers, Mobi and Kubernetes, uh, uh, join forces to uh, innovate further. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're one big community uh, uh, trying to get containers to be more mainstream. One of the changes that happened that's pretty important uh, that Michael Crosby led uh, is uh, uh, we had a BDFL close, a benevol Benevolent Dictatorship for Life uh, uh, in, um, uh, in our governance for Mobi projects. And the BDFL was Solomon Hikes, uh, the founder of Docker. Uh, and what BDFL means is that when there are technical uh, disagreements uh, between maintainers, uh, they can escalate that to the BDFL. So we replace that by a technical steering committee that has been elected uh, uh, last month, I think. So let's talk about uh, ContainerD, Linux Kit, and InfraKit. And uh, so for ContainerD, uh, Steven, uh, who's one of the maintainers in ContainerD, is going to uh, explain uh, how we went to 1.0. Hey, everybody. Did I mention, uh, did Patrick or anybody mention that ContainerD is at 1.0? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so this just is pretty exciting. We gonna... honestly didn't plan it to be released with KubeCon. It was just like, uh, like that's the way the dates worked out. So uh, I think that's, it's great to be having that news here. Um, so it shipped yesterday. Uh, check out the blog link. You can read all about the details. I'm not going to go into the details of what was and wasn't in the, in the 1.0. I'll just talk a little bit about the project. Oh, uh, if you, yeah, if you're taking a picture. <laughs> go back, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right. So uh, early history of Container D 1.0, uh, or sorry, of Container D uh, was um, the basic, so Docker had this thing called lib container, um, and that was spun out into a project called uh, Container D eventually. Uh, there's a few steps in there that I'm going to omit. Um, and that was released in Docker 111, and it acted uh, as a management or like a supervisor of uh, uh, OCI run, run C executors. Um, we then, uh, over time, we decided um, 
uh, due to uh, requests from people in the community and uh, based on architecture, we decided to expand that the Container D uh, project was a good place to expand uh, some of the core functionality of Docker uh, that people wanted in just kind of a, a simple core container runtime that people could rely on. And this is this is a Docker with uh, minimal features and uh, that that's, that has full capability of the entire operating system. So. Um, this is this is kind of the timeline. Uh, December 2016 is when we sp first spun it out of Docker. I think uh, 111 came out in the f uh, in the spring of that year, um, maybe April t uh, 2017. We then donated it um, at Cloud Native uh, Con in March 2017. Um, we had our first uh, Containerd summit in April of this year, um, and that was. Um, uh, uh, that this is where we kind of collected information from the community, and we, we brought a lot of people together and said, "Hey, what do you want? If we could turn, if we could expand the scope of Container D just into a, a uh, what's needed as this like single host container runtime, what would it look like?" And so we took a lot of feedback there, and um, this informed what became Container D 1.0. Um, in uh, November 2017, we released our first uh, Kubernetes 1.8 integration so that uh, Kubernetes, you could try out the betas with, uh, with Kubernetes um, and, and use Containerd as the base runtime through the project CRI Containerd. Um, and then uh, I think yesterday, was it yesterday? Flights uh, extend time, you know. Um, yesterday we released the Containerd 1.0 um, and that's now generally available. Uh, a little piece of trivia, if you're running Docker 17.11 or 17.12 RC on your uh, laptop, you're already running Container D 1.0, so uh, you may be running it and not even know. Um, so again, why did we do this? Uh, why did we do all this work, and uh, why the big hubbub? Um, so uh, the, we wanted to expand the Docker platform. Uh, in well, we wanted to expand uh, Docker into a platform and focus on develop, developer experience, and we found the goals of that uh, conflicting with uh, the goals of a well-behaved container runtime, and this affected. Uh, our engineering processes, but uh, as uh, 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 the engineering processes of our uh, of our like partners as well. Um, so uh, we wanted something that could be used beyond Docker um, and kind of fulfill the role of the like 2014 view of Docker as this like single host container runtime. So we donated it to the CNCF, and uh, history was made. <laughs> so uh, the goals of the project were uh, to have a very small, lightweight gRPC-based API um, and a heavy, heavy client library that uh, that, w that minimized the amount of abstraction. So uh, we didn't want you to have to uh, plumb a single flag all the way through from the client to the runtime. We wanted to make that stuff available uh, directly in the Containerd client, making it a lot easier to uh, add new features. So if you upgrade run C, you don't need to also upgrade uh, Containerd to get access to new features in run C. Um, the other the other part of this was uh, designing for stability and performance. This means that we, when we add something, we know that we want that to be there forever. Um, but also, uh, when we do add things, we uh, are trying to design so that they can be stabilized. And so, if we're unsure about things, we're, we hold off on putting them in. And and this will this will help us to uh, stabilize over time. We also have uh, lots of. Uh, things that can help us to do this, such as uh, API-based integration tests rather than CLI-based integration tests, like are in Docker, um, and it, uh, as well as uh, we, we take the entire API and um, scan all of our protobuf descript or our, our protobuf files, and we take that and put it into a, a giant API stabilization file. So this will help us identify API changes over time, and this is all this is all generated and automated. So it, it'll prevent a lot of the problems that uh, that that we had with Docker. Um, and the other the other thing to to note is that it's highly decoupled. It's made up of several microservices that you kind of use together. Um, and if you're more curious about the details of that, you can come to the Container D salon, and I will talk your head off about it. So. <laughs> Um, the other thing about Container D um, that, that's, that's huge is uh, we focused on an all cart design so that like uh, if you don't want if you don't like the way we do image storage or if you don't like the way we do uh, push and pull or, or anything uh, you don't have to use it you can you can only use the parts of Container D that you actually want to use and you can you can actually disable most of the parts of Container D uh, that you don't that you don't need to use. 
Um, we also focused on using like known good technology from the CNCF, so um, uh, as well as the Linux Foundation. Um, so like uh, OCI container runtime and Im images. Uh, we use gRPC heavily, um, and as well as something uh, a project called Prometheus for exporting metrics. So um, and, and those are great CNCF projects. You should definitely check them all out. Um, this is my list of use cases. I, I hope this to be. Uh, this slide's a little old, um, but uh, like I hope this to be expanding. I mean, the big one is Docker. Uh, again, you're using it in Docker today. The one, the, the next one that we'll see and and uh, coming out in the next few weeks, going into beta, hopefully, uh, is CRI Container D. Will you we're, will you you'll be able to use. Uh, Containerd end-to-end -end on um, Kubernetes. Uh, we also have a, an experimental swarm kit uh, exp uh, implementation, but uh, <laughs> it might not compile anymore. Um, and then, uh, but the the other the other two big ones are Linux Kit and Build Kit. Um, Linux Kit uses Containerd to um, actually package its system services, and Build Kit uses it to control builds. Um, and this is one thing I'll actually highlight about Container D is that like it's meant uh, as being a critical piece of the infrastructure, uh, whether you're on your dev machine all the way out to your your cloud or your own hardware, so that when you're running like containers in Container D, it's a uh, like there's no there's no such thing as like oh it works for me. It's 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 end to end. You use it for the build. You use it on your dev machine. You use it in production. Oh, and the future potential things, uh, like like there is an open fast integration if you. I don't know. Uh, uh, there's Alex. Alice is using. A, it has a talk where I think he's integrated with CRI Container D. He's always doing really cool stuff. So I don't know what the current state of that is. Yeah. Um, and then uh, IBM Cloud Bluemix will use CRI Container D, and hopefully you will be too. Uh, you can you know integrate it. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know if you're having problems. So um, a, a few facts and figures about the project. Um, we have. Uh, 1,994 GitHub stars, um, 401 forks, 108 contributors. I think it was roughly 87 to the Containerd 1.0, which is really cool to see. And there's a, a lot of different people contributing. So that's uh, I, I was looking at the list of the names the other day, and it's really, really cool to have so many people be interested in this project, such that they're going to uh, do uh, code, uh, code contributions. Uh, we also have eight maintainers from uh, independents and member companies, including Docker, IBM, ZTE, ZJU is that is that right? Um, as well as uh, 33, uh, th uh, 3,030 commits and uh, 28 releases, I think, <laughs> 28 or 29. Um, anyways, so this is a lot of links, um, and if you go to that blog, uh, I think we get most of these. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'll highlight the most important ones uh, that you might be interested in. Uh, check out the getting started guide. The getting started guide is is really cool. It'll kind of show you. The uh, like what you know what is Containerd? What does it do? What does it not do? Um, that kind of thing. Um, and then you can you can look through the uh, the scope table, the roadmap, kind of see where we're going. If there's stuff missing on there, uh, you know, reach out to us through an issue or on our on the Docker community Slack, and uh, you should be able to uh, kind of push us in the direction that you want, and we can help you with a proposal or or anything that you need. Um, uh, you can also read a little bit about the architecture of Containerd and the approach to how we've implemented it, um, at, and that can help you to understand how to use the APIs a little bit better. Um, and then uh, you can learn uh, more about this by, uh, there's, there's actually lots of talks. Uh, there's the Linux Kit uh, and Kubernetes talk at the Austin Docker meetup by, that's already happened, okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, what about, so Phil's talk has already happened, but tomorrow uh, we have uh, the Container D Salon where I think we have a, a large slot, I think it's 70 minutes or something like that, and we'll go, uh, we'll go into details on architecture uh, as well as uh, we'll show you a little bit how to use the client and then um, how to get started with Container D. I think uh, uh, Jess Valarezo has created a great getting started guide, so you sh shouldn't, shouldn't be able to, it should be low drama. Anyways, uh, now I'm going to pass it over to uh, Justin Cormack for a presentation and demo on Linux Kit. Yep. There you go. Do you I want to uh, that's right. Okay. Just put that out. There you go. Um, have we got slides? Yes. Okay, 
And so I'm going to talk to you about Linux Kit and a bit about Kubernetes as well, because we're at KubeCon and um, we've been doing a load of cool stuff with Kubernetes. Um, so kind of why and what is it? So um, Linux Kit, the sort of strap line is a toolkit for building secure, portable, lean operating systems for containers. So it's about taking it's about taking a kit that gives you the ability to just build Linux in exactly the way you want. Um, we give you a load of pieces that help you build Linux in the way we've been using it for Docker uses, but you can totally replace all of them um, with anything else you want. And the pieces that you build it from are containers, so you can build them with your normal workflows for building containers. And you can build Linux in just a minute or so. It's designed to be built in a CI pipeline um, you can test it locally and then deploy it wherever you like in the cloud or on bare metal or on your laptop or whatever you want. Um, so it's a very um, different, lightweight, cloud-native approach to, um, to how to deal with Linux. Um, and it's also, it, it, um, I, I really think the whole immutable delivery idea that we have with containers is very important. Um, also for system images, and we're, we've really gone with that. So the idea is that you build a new image and redeploy if you want to update things rather than having a really complicated kind of desired state management thing going on inside your inside your image. Um, security is, for, is, is designed to be minimal and just run exactly what you want. And I think um, the NIST Container Security Guide recommends that you do use a, con a a container-specific OS um, for running containers, and that's one of the um, important use cases for Linux Kit. How does it work? Um, it's got a very, very simple architecture. It's exactly the same design as a pod in Kubernetes, um, kind of coincidentally, but it's also kind of convenient to understand. So this, the life cycle is that you boot a few, you start a few containers on boot sequentially, um, which we run through Run C, and then we bring up Containerd and run all the services you want at that point um, in in parallel. And so it's a, it's a very simple, understandable architecture, and that corresponds to a YAML config file. Um, so you can see here you've got um, on boot. Oops, um, you've got DHCP, and then oops, then this is running um, Redis. So it's a, it's a really simple example. I'll show you that in practice in the demo in a minute. Um, other important differences is that it's all designed around immutability. There's no package manager or anything at runtime. You can you just build it and replace it. If you want to do dynamic services, you can run Docker or Kubernetes on it. So it, it makes life much simpler and it's easier and that gives you all the advantages of building fast and running fast. We have a very container-like build, push, and run workflow um, with support for pretty much every kind of cloud provider or disk format. You can build ISOs or you can build VHDs. Um, and we've had the community add support for all these different platforms that they like to use, everything from OpenStack to VirtualBox to KVM and so on. So there's a really um, wide range of platforms you can run it on and, and there's really simple tooling or you can use the the native provider tooling. So you can just build an AMI using our tooling and then run that using the Amazon tooling or whatever you want to do. Or, um, so we, we, we designed the tooling around giving you a starting point and then for production applications, you can obviously use more advanced tooling. Um, how it fits into other CNCF projects, um, we use a whole range of things. Obviously, Containerd is really important because it's actually the key bit that's running your containers. Um, we use Notary and Tuff for s image signing to um, sign the packages we build. Uh, Kubernetes and CNI, we've, um, I'll talk about in a second. Um, and GRPC and Prometheus are used in Containerd, and you can use that to get system stats out and so on out of Linux Kit, which is really cool. So it, it, it's, you know, it's very much as part a cloud-native way of doing things. It's now in the CNCF landscape as of, of the new version today. Um, Kubernetes, uh, we've actually been working on Kubernetes support actually with, yeah, with um, Ilya, as Patrick mentioned, for uh, seven months now. We did um, Kubernetes demo when we first launched Linux Kit, and it was the first time 
we showed um, Kubernetes and uh, kind of at, at DockerCon, and the, uh, apart from the um, the original launch of Kubernetes, which was at DockerCon, but um, um, and we've worked we've worked together with the community to build out um, everything. It's now got its own repo. It's a really straightforward, standard, understandable version, you know, unmodified version of Kubernetes using um, kubeodm to run it. Um, it supports different with both the Docker runtime and CRI Containerd. We've been using that for testing CRI Containerd. Um, it's designed to be customized. You can add different networking, or whatever. Um, and it's also the upstream for the Docker desktop editions, where we're shipping Kubernetes on the desktop support any day now. Uh, you can sign up for the beta at beta.docker.com, and it will probably ship in the next few days. Um, this is the UI for Docker Desktop, which I'm really um, excited about. It's very simple. There's a tick box saying, I want Kubernetes, and then you have Kubernetes on your, on your desktop, and it's just there, and you can just run Kubernetes. It's all um, enabled by the Lens Kit support that, that we use as the, you know, it's all, it's all exactly the same code as we're using in the upstream open source project that you can, if you want to make different customizations, you're using the same code. Um, but it's just designed to be really, really easy to use. And we're incredibly excited that we're being able to ship out um, Kubernetes on the desktop for, to millions of users of Docker for Mac and Windows. Just because, um, and we think that's really going to help people um, get, get, get their hands on Kubernetes for the first time and understand how to use it and, and, and have a really easy development experience. Um, so I'm going to show you a few demos. Um, Got um, a few minutes for demos. Um, I'll show you here. Here's the um, so this this is the new d Docker that's about to sh Docker des for Mac that's about to ship with the Docker's running Kubernetes and running and the preference thing here, which is enable Kubernetes. Which is you cl click that button, it takes a, a minute or so, and it'll just restart with Kubernetes support. Um, and when you're running it, you you um, you've just got a normal you know, normal Kubernetes is there. Kubectl's already installed. It um, tells you it's Docker for Mac um, and running Linux kit kernel. And this is Docker 17.11. So it's all really, really straightforward. You can just use Kubernetes as you, as you normally would. I'm going to show you a quick example of how easy it is to build something with Linux kit. So this is a really simple uh, Linux kit YAML file that we have just at the top of the repo. We say which kernel we want, which version of container D what we want. And this, apart from a few other things, it just runs the um, Nginx image from Docker Hub, the Alpine one. Um, and so it's really, it shows that you can just run services from straightforward upstream normal containers. Um, we can just do Linux kit build with the YAML file. Um, and I need to update my cert. Um, um, we, do always, yeah, we always check the certificates when we're building everything. Um, we, we, we did a lot of integration with Notary, um, which is um, there. So that's how long it takes to build. Um, and then we can just run this locally. That's the image we built. And there's Linux booting. As you can see, there we um I've got quite a big text on this thing. So we've just booted up Linux Kit, got a console, and we're just running a very few processes. We can just connect to Nginx and get the Hello World page from Nginx. So that's how simple it is to just build a very simple, simple service. Uh, Kubernetes is obviously slightly more complicated, but not much. Uh, this is a console on uh, actually on Docker for Mac, and you can see it's running. Um, um, I should make this text a bit smaller, shouldn't I? <laughs> so you can actually see more of it. Um, so you can see it's running do uh, Docker Container D, Compose, Cube DNS, Weave networking, Cube Proxy, everything, uh, the pause container. So it's just um, you know just a very simple. Um, Kubernetes install that we've we've built with Linux Kit, um, which is basically exactly the same. It's basically the same code as if you go to um, oops, Linux Kit. 
the landscape Kubernetes repo, all the, um, I did, I made this all very large from me up earlier when, <laughs> when the screen was a bit small. Um, so this is the landscape Kubernetes repo, which has a very simple build process that you can um, basically build your own Kubernetes, customize it, and, and um, basically um, configure it in different ways. Um, and you can kind of get started with that. So it's a, it's, it's a really simple way to build Kubernetes images for local use, for production use. And we've got a, a lot of people working with us on this who want to use it um, in production. We've been talking to, um, I had a chat about integrating it into COPS yesterday, for example, which would be, I think would be really cool to do um, so that you can deploy it on AWS easily um, with COPS. And um, we've got lots of people who've got, you know, real, interest in putting this into production in, in large companies and things. So we're really quite excited about particularly the Kubernetes integration because a load of a load of people have come to us and said that's what they want to use Lenskit for. So um, if you if you want to get involved, um, it's you know it's been a very successful project. It's, um, there's lots of get of demos to get started. So um, and there's a, uh, come and come and chat. Thanks. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you, Justin. All right. Okay. Oops. Oops. <laughs> uh, okay, so so we just have a few minutes left, and uh, I wanted to um, uh, to talk to you about the one last project from the Mobi project, uh, which is called Infraket. Do you? Oh. Should I go in there? And... Okay. Uh... Okay. Ah. again. No luck. Okay, I'll do it without slides. Uh, so, uh, so the last project I wanted to tell you about is InfraKit. Uh, so InfraKit is a, a declarative management system for managing your infrastructure. Uh, and, uh, and it's all based on containers. Uh, and so, oh, well, it works very good. Uh, it, so it's all based on containers. And, uh, oh, <laughs> OK, can I, uh, let me see. Yeah, mirror displays. Okay, that's good. Uh, it's all based on containers. Uh, we uh, we launched it at uh, LinuxCon in Berlin uh, in October uh, 2016. Uh, one of the difference between Infraket and other infrastructure management systems uh, is that it's uh, it's doing an active monitoring of the infrastructure. And if the description that you're telling him uh, that you want for your infrastructure uh, differs with reality, uh, InfraKit takes uh, active action to change that. 
so we proposed it to CNCF uh, um, last uh, June, uh, and it's a little bit too soon to accept uh, infrastructure management projects in there. Uh, but these are actually uh, some of the slides that we use in order to present it to CNCF. So it's focusing on the provisioning aspect of uh, provisioning. So you could use it to provision your Kubernetes cluster uh, or your uh, uh, Docker cluster. So in the CNCF landscape, it, it tackles that, uh, that part uh, at the bottom there. Uh, and the kind of use cases that it can be used for uh, is to set up your day zero install uh, and also your day one configure for container orchestrators. Uh, but where InfraKit really shines is uh, in uh, day N automation of infrastructure, like how to uh, provision new nodes, uh, how to update your nodes with new versions uh, of the orchestrator itself. Uh, one of the, uh, yeah, actually, uh, time is done, but just one thing I wanted to mention is uh, one of the really interesting development in InfraKit recently, uh, David Chung, who's working on that, has been working on a, a cluster autoscaler for Kubernetes. Uh, so your Kubernetes cluster connected to InfraKit uh, could, based on some metrics that you define, uh, autoscale the cluster itself based on the load. So lots of uh, interesting developments uh, tied to Kubernetes there. Uh, so that these are the details about the autoscaler, and you can get involved on GitHub uh, docker slash infrakit. Uh, you can learn more about all the projects uh, on the Mobi blog. Uh, we had a Mobi summit uh, at DockerCon this year uh, that had tons of talks. All these talks have been recorded, uh, and all the slides have been published on our blog. So it's blog.mobiproject.org or you go on GitHub and you can find uh, the code and play with it. Thanks very much. Many of us will, uh, will be at the conference, so you can find us either at the Docker booth or, or, or in the corridors. Uh, and there's one more session that should be pretty interesting. It's the OpenFast session by Alex Ellis. Uh, so OpenFast is a, uh, it's a serverless platform, uh, and he's doing some really interesting ties uh, with some of the Mobi projects. So for example, in there he has a fantastic demo of uh, using functions to just deploy automatically uh, Linux kit images. All right, thanks very much.